This is your Chargers linebacker, Dan Henley, and you're tuning in with Chargers Unleashed. Welcome to a special live edition of Chargers Unleashed. Jake Ebner and Dan Wolkenstein here with you from the LA Football Network. If this is your first time tuning into the show. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, and Apple Cod- Podcast. Dan Wolkenstein can barely even get that one out. The excitement is palpable. It's running through my veins right now. Two days remaining until the 2024 NFL Draft. There is so much excitement, hype, however you want to spin it. Um, Around this Chargers team right now, in terms of what they are going to ultimately end up doing at five in the in the two days that will follow Thursday, and ultimately what this draft class is going to shake up to look like, lots to get into. We wanted to make sure that we did a live show this close to the NFL draft. Lots to get into tonight as Dan and I are going to go through some of our favorite players, whether it's rounds or day one, two, three, doesn't matter. Some guys we have talked about at nauseum on this show. Other guys we'll be speaking about for the first time. I have no idea what Dan's list looked like, nor do my own. Uh, we're basically just flying by the seat of our pants as it relates to the my guys in this. As well, of course, we will obviously be taking questions from the chat, so make sure to get those in. And then we will be capping off today's live show with a fan-driven mock draft. That's our agenda today. We have lots to get into before we do. Dan Walkenstein, talk to me. Woo, boy, Chargers fans in the chat. We got two more days until Chargers make history. First year under Jim Harbaugh and Joe Hortiz. Chargers era officially begins uh, in new form, new fashion. And boy, am I pumped. I know we talked about this before. I can't remember a draft season that has been this anticipated and has me this excited for the new regime, if you will. And so, yeah, this live show, we had to do it. We listened to a lot of the fans and viewers and listeners who said he wanted to do a mock draft with you involved. So, look, here we are. We're doing that second half of the show. That will be what we do. First half, we're going all things Dan's dudes, Jake's guys, Jake's jewels, whatever you want to coin your term, Jake. I don't really care. I'll let you work on that. Uh, Folks in the chat, you know the deal. If you have questions, comments, topics, put it in the chat. We'll do our best to kind of weave it in and out as we go. First thing on the docket, we're going to be going through our guys. I'm curious, though, folks in the chat, who are your guys? I'm curious to see how many of the ones that Jake and I have selected here to talk about. There's so many to choose from. But who are the ones that you love? Who are the ones you will be pounding the table? You'll be doing backflips. You'll be doing belly flops in Rivers Lake. Whatever it is that you'll be doing. Shots, cartwheels, you tell us. We'll put it in the chat as we go. Uh, Jake, how big is your my guys list generally? Not necessarily what we're going to talk about here, but like, how many guys would you say you have as your guys? This year's probably one of the bigger lists. I, I, I'm only going to be talking about 10 of them. That's kind of a microcosm as it relates to the overall list. I mean, in general, you can make a my guys for just the wide receiver list <laughs> because the Chargers need two of them. And you could make a case for a lot of different guys on how they could be a great fit for this team. Uh, but in how we're going to break this list down, I've got 10 guys. I, Dan, I think you've got eight to 10 guys as yep. well that we have. Yep. This is going to be fun I because I like this just from the standpoint of, look, regardless on whether or not the Chargers select any of these players, these are just guys that are fun to watch and then to see where they're ultimately going to end up going and making an impact for whatever team that they end up land on. This is why this is fun. And this is why we don't even rank these because there really is no rankings. We, we like these players so much. No rankings are even needed. It's just to say, let's go through the list and let's have some fun with it. Yeah, Young West in the in the chat already. I'm not going to lie. I know we need depth in this draft, but if we have Marvin Harrison Jr. or Neighbors there at five and trade up, trade back, I'm guessing he means, I might just check myself into a crazy home. Good news. We will be doing a mock draft here in a bit. I put a poll up on X to see what fans would rather do, trade up or, excuse me, trade back or stick and pick at five. If Marvin Harrison Jr. is not on the board, we'll see what happens. Uh, Jake, shall we kind of kick this thing into high gear? Hayden says Maserati going four. I think you and I both would agree. The most likely scenario is Arizona sticks and picks. Would you agree? I I think that even if quarterbacks go one, two, three, I'm not so sure that Arizona is going to find a trade partner that's going to give them 
the amount that they want to move off of Marvin Harrison Jr. It just doesn't sound realistic. As much as I would like it to happen, and as much as I would like to see Marvin Harrison Jr. be there for the Chargers to select at five, the closer and closer we get to the NFL draft, and of course, I can't remember who put out the tweet maybe a half hour ago. Someone said, take this for what it's worth. But Marvin Harrison Jr. met with two teams, and not, not including the top line. It was the Bears and it was the Cardinals. So, however you want to shake that, that's probably how the first four picks are going to go. Yes. Um, so, Jake, before to kind of set the table here, we're going to go through our guys. So, Jake's going to do some. I'm going to do some. We'll go back and forth. There obviously will be some overlap. There are some guys that Jake loves and I love, and vice versa. Uh, we'll go through and look at the chat as we continue on to see how many of the ones that you guys have align with us. I'm already looking James Wagner, Jake. He has Fuanga and he has Zach Frazier, who looks like door number three here on Jake's guys. We've also got Kevin A, who gives his a few names, Junior Colson, Dwayne Carter, aka Little Wayne, Jaden Hicks, Isaac Rendo, and Brendan Rice. Jake, the floor is yours. Who are some of your Jake's guys, do you have a TM? Do you have a trademark for a name, coin phrase for yours? No, apparently I'm not as popular as you are when it comes to the trademark. So good luck with your patent on that. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's start from from this slide in particular. I didn't have these any in any discernible order here, but let's just go from left to from the left on this one. Let's start with Braden Fisk, Florida State. Mm-hmm. I loved everything that I have seen from Braden Fisk through watching the tape, through the testing phase for him, especially when it came to him just absolutely demolishing the combine. Yes, production was better for him in 2022 than it was in 2023, but he still finished with 43 tackles, 19 hurries, and six sacks. He just explodes off the line, plays with his hair on fire. He can penetrate through offensive linemen with speed, with handwork. His play against Louisville against the run and how quickly he was able to get into the backfield, just it it highlights his best traits that he has as as an interior defensive lineman. And like I said, he had a great week of practice during the Senior Bowl and absolutely demolished the combine workouts. If this was a possibility to where you could say, no, look, even for the Chargers right now as it stands, we, we haven't talked that much about interior defensive linemen and the needs that the Chargers have in that circumstance. I could see a universe at 37, if Braden Fisk was still on the board, like, hey, we talk about how Jim Harbaugh likes to prioritize the trenches, but which trenches are we talking about? Because they both need work. But in general, I love what I see from Braden Fisk. I think whatever team ends up selecting him is going to get a great piece in the center of their their defensive line that is going to be great against the run and the pass. Look, Braden Fisk, I think, is a fan favorite for a lot of people for a lot of good reasons. Uh, You can't go wrong. If Braden Fisk is the pick wherever they pick him, uh, I don't think Chargers fans should or could be upset, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, next up on your list, Jake, what you got? Is this how we're doing? I thought we were alternating. We can all we can alternate. We'll By all it. means, let's get to your trademark. <laughs> okay, so I'm going with my guys here. Um, so I've talked about it a bit on, on X. I've said it here a bit before, but you better, if you are not doing so already, Keep up with the Joneses. And if you don't understand the phrase, look to your left. (laughs) These far left guys from Florida State and Boston College, Elijah Jones and Jerry and Jones, Elijah Jones from BC, Jerry and Jones, the slot corner out of Florida State. Both of these guys are Dan's dude, certified, trademark, whatever you say. Elijah Jones, he's an outside corner, 6'1", like 185, ran a 4'4", 440. 42 and a half inch vertical leap for this guy, by the way. Um, ideal height, I would imagine getting this guy with Ben Herbert and company, thicken him out about 10, 15 pounds or so, get him up around 200 pounds. Top man coverage grade, according to PFF, among all corners. Third lowest passer rating allowed in man coverage among corners, 100 plus snaps. Not a zone corner. So again, like he's very specific. Island, Jones Island put him there. Incredible boundary defender. Active hands, a disruptor, gets in fits with receivers all the time. Jerry and Jones, this is like your slot demon, in my opinion. Six foot run nanny, run six foot 190, excuse me. Ran a 43840, second best athletic score among corners, according to Next Gen Stats. 39 and a half inch vertical by himself. Ideal height, 
Thin frame again, but again, this is a this is a slot nickel corner. This guy had top man coverage grade amongst corners, third lowest passer rating allowed in man coverage. Uh, I think I actually had that one wrong. Excuse me, check that. He's, in my opinion, Jerry and Jones is probably going to be what could possibly push Asante Samuel Jr. up or down, depending on how good he does. Both Joneses, in my opinion, are wildly underrated. And probably Elijah Jones is the more underrated one. You hear a lot of people talk about Jerry and Jones. Elijah Jones is like down in the 150 to 200 in most people's big boards. I think he's much better than that. I'm pounding the table for both of these Joneses. Jake, do you, are you as high on the Joneses as I am? With this quarterback group that the, the Chargers currently have in their backfield right now, yeah, you should be high on both of these players right now, especially Elijah Jones, Dan. I was even seeing a, a tweet actually earlier today regarding him that they believe that he could actually go a lot higher than projected. When we did our mock draft yesterday, we were actually shocked that he was even still on the board when we ultimately ended up selecting him. Um, but Elijah Jones is going to be a very good corner. Honestly, I don't think that you could go wrong with either of these two guys. Yeah, and again, I, I misspoke. I apologize. Jerry and Jones, I, I always get the Joneses confused, and so it's just my brain's mush at this point. Um, so let me get right on Jerry and Jones. This past season, only yielded 16 receptions, gave up a passer rating of 25.3, allowed no touchdowns, had three interceptions, and just a 4.2 passer rating allowed in man coverage, which is the best in college football. This guy flies around the football. He's crazy click and close, really good instincts, three-year starter. Uh, Jerry and just the reason why Jerry and Jones has a lot of hype, but both Joneses, in my opinion, I love, I love Jake. Let's uh, pass it over to you for a couple. What you got? I'll stick with the cornerback here, Dan, and a very, very intriguing cornerback. And we've talked about the possibility of the Chargers double dipping at certain positions and whether that's wide receiver, whether that's cornerback, because they need dramatic help at both. Kamal Hayden out of Tennessee. I'm very yes. interested to see where he ultimately ends up going. And now you're talking about a player who has great size, athleticism. At one point in time this season, he had the third best coverage grade among DBs with 100 uh, coverage snaps with 90.4. You know, unfortunately, he ended up having his season ending shoulder uh, injury uh, following the game versus Atlanta. Before the injury, though, he was Tennessee's most productive corner, allowing only 12 receptions on 33 attempts. He had three interceptions, no touchdowns, but the quarterback rating when he was targeted, seven. It, it was seven. <laughs> so the biggest questions for him are obviously going to be the experience as he only has started 16 games over the past two years in Tennessee, and hopefully that shoulder injury is not going to hamper him too much. But ultimately, I'm intrigued by where someone is going to see the value for Kamal Hayden because when healthy, I think this is a very, very talented quarterback that you could add to you the back end of your roster. And I've seen a lot of people predicting him that he would probably go, you know, easy on day three, just not 100% of when. But I think that his intangibles in terms of his size and athleticism should have coaches salivating for some value. If you can get him at good health, you could develop him into a very nice backfield or, <laughs> excuse me, cornerback to add to your backfield. Yep. And then I know you've been bullish on the center class this entire offseason. Talk about your guy. Jeez. Um, if I haven't said enough about Zach Fraser already, uh, it's hard to find anything else that I can honestly say about him. Zach Fraser, in my opinion, if he did not go down with an injury, and I've said this before, I truly believe that he would be in contention to be the first center off the board. I know Schrager, in his latest mock, had Fraser being up in there, and then all of a sudden, JPJ was out in his first round mock, which was very surprising. But I truly believe that if Frazier was healthy throughout the duration of the season, got a chance to ultimately end up playing the, super, the senior bowl, he only ended up going through drills, didn't ultimately end up playing in the game. I truly believe that he would be in contention for the first center to come off the board in this class. I love everything about him, I think, as it relates to what Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman want to install for this 
team, this this run game. He is just an absolute mauler, and that collegiate wrestling background definitely helps him out in that. But he is so flexible, moves laterally very well. Does did not give up a sack and only had three quarterback hits this past season. He's got great agility with with good blocking range. Makes easy adjustments to get himself into positions to make blocks. Can get to the second level very quickly on double blocks. There's a clip against Baylor. If you go back and watch it from 2022, where he just makes it so effortlessly by taking the defender who's on him and just moving to his left. And before you know it, he's already in the, in the second level and just right, right in the linebacker's face, ready to make the next block. Uh, his mental traits, he has very high football IQ, uh, great at diagnosing pressure, picking up the rushers. Just in general, his power is ridiculous. And the, here's where that collegiate wrestling comes into play. Uh, there are so many clips of him just going one-on-one with defenders where he barely gives up any ground. He's either stonewalling them or he's rerouting them to the nearest freeway freeway exit. I love everything that I see about Zach Frazier. And honestly, at 37, we've seen mock drafts that have had that selected. Depending on what the Chargers would ultimately do in the first round, I wouldn't be mad at adding a guy like Zach Frazier to this roster. You know what, honestly, you are spitting rhymes and bars, so keep it going, little wheezy style. Let's go for your fourth guy on the right, then I'll go finish off mine. Mr. Dwayne Carter out of mm. Duke. Physicality and versatility are the two words that come to mind when watching Carter. Just brings a high energy playing style and does it consistently through whether he's going up against the run, going up against the pass, and now, yes, admittedly, much like it was with Braden Fisk, his 22 tape, or 2022 tape was better than his 2023 tape. Doesn't have the elite, elite athleticism that some of the other interior guys have in this class. But he's still a big challenge for opposing offensive linemen. Strong to hold his spot against the run, against double teams. He's got the footwork and power to drive back blockers. He doesn't just rely on his power, though. He's very technical with his handwork, can use a bevy of pass rush moves to get past his blockers. And he's predominantly used from the interior, but he was also kicked outside and and used on the outside as an end and as a rusher as well. So I think that uh, when you take a guy like that and when you look at, A, what the Chargers need in the interior of the defensive line, you're still technically looking for a little bit more pass rush help to round out the group of Thule, Bosa, and Mack. I just love the versatility that Dwayne Carter brings, and I think that he would be a nice, versatile chess piece in this interior defensive line front. You got me on him. Uh, I did not necessarily... I didn't see much until you told me about him, and then I went to him, and I was like, oh my goodness, yes. Um, Dwayne Carter will be fun. Uh, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Let's get some of the comments real quick before we continue on. Uh, let's see. Wouldn't mind Frazier at 37. Uh, let's see. Brandon Dorless. That's another name for interior. I almost put him on there. I have another interior defensive lineman there instead. Actually, I have a couple, I believe. Um, Jake, question in here real quick. Someone asked about what is with, where did it go? Philip asked, what's with the odds shifting hard for the Chargers to take J.J. McCarthy? I mean, when, when, did, when did this happen? I saw something where it went like, I forget, I'm paraphrasing, but I think it went like from a thousand to one to now it's like a hundred to one, which again, hundred to one, still no chance. Again, like, I think there's a chance that the fifth overall pick is JJ McCarthy, but the Char- not, not the Chargers taking him. <laughs> Come on. This is <laughs> not so the dumb. Chargers taking him. <laughs> no. Uh, another one. Kevin says Max MF and Melton is going to be a star, a big star. Great I think player. that might be pun intended. Because he may play star, depending on what position he's doing. Um, All right, let's keep this thing going. Brad says, we need at least six more DBs. Hence why I've got three of them here on this list. Uh, So let's get to my other two. Jake. um, Real quick, Dan. Actually, piggyback off of that. Um, See, We had Alan in, uh, in the super chat real quick, just to piggyback off the DBs. If we draft a cornerback and Asante Samuel Jr. struggles through the first half of the season, do you think he'd get traded? And what do you think his value is? First off, thank you, Alan. Shout out to the four ninety nine that you provided us. Much, much appreciated. What do I think his value is? Um, he's going into what? His third, he's what? Third seat, fourth season, right? 
for a season. So this is his last year of his contract. Not much, honestly. Uh, I don't think his value would be that high. I think he probably, I, I just, I don't think, I don't think the scenario happens, honestly. Um, and if he does struggle, I also don't really see him struggling that much. Like he really hasn't, he, he's a perplexing player because I really like Asante Samuel Jr. And he's great for what he does, but he's also not great at what he doesn't do well. And the one thing that this Chargers team needs is corners who can tackle. And he's not really the tackling type. He's, you know, he puts effort there. But it kind of feels like after the concussions and stuff that he went through, he's played a little differently since then. And I'm not sure that that could just be me. But I don't know. I don't think there would be much trade market for him. Do you? Am I out of place here? I wouldn't necessarily say there's not a market. Personally, I don't see a situation where this ends up panning out and you and I say this strictly just because of what the cornerback room looks like right now. And and yes, you have Christian Fulton, who's essentially your hope is going to be a reclamation project on a one year deal. But I don't I don't see why you would potentially take away from your DB room, even in a certain situation like this. I know that Joe Hortiz has said since his introductory press conference that they will never stop looking for corners, which I'm sure begged this question. Yep. But I don't see it in that circumstance, given the fact of, well, who else do you have on the roster? Even, <laughs> even in the trade scenario, even if you get a, a, a fair compensation package back, who, who do you have left in that circumstance that you ultimately would believe that right now could step up and fill that position better? Not much. Not much. Jake, let's go a little quicker here. We've got to get to the draft, which I know a lot of people are excited for mock draft season. Uh, so my three and four on this list, uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson, uh, a tongue twister of a name, but this guy is slick with it on the field. Four interceptions this past year, four, four, one forty time, three year starter, a little undersized, but sure. Tackler 76.2 coverage grade. I think he had a 77 tackling grade plays very aggressively at the safety position. Really good ball skills would be great to have behind both Derwin and Alohi. We have no idea what JT Woods is going to be or not going to be, but he brings versatility, which I know is a staple of Jesse Mitchell's defense experience in the slot in the box, as well as deep safety. His instincts are what he predicates his ball skills on good physicality can definitely lay the wood cerebral player. Someone I would love to see in this DB room. Uh, Jake, what do you have? Where do you have him as your, on your safety room? Like list, excuse me. Admittedly, like he's safety, high for me. I mean, Top yeah, he, he is. But, three. This, but the safety classes, I know it's, it, it's not the best. It's not that deep. So naturally, yes, you would have that there um, from a safety standpoint in general. I'll be interested to see how that position is targeted in the drafts. Because yes, you obviously keep a low he. You have no idea still what JT Woods is ultimately going to end up being. What does the back half of that position group look like? You still need to, I think, add some depth. It's probably not one of the higher positions that you target throughout the draft, given the other needs that you have to fill. But I'd be interested to see in general how the safety market is addressed. Yep. I, I'm very curious what happens with the safety group and when they go, because they're kind of all over the place. By the way, Cam Kitchens. I love Cam Kitchens. If they didn't have Dermot James, Cam Kitchens would be the guy that I'd be sprinting for. Uh, last one on this list, for at least for this slide, Tyron Tracy. Jake, we talked about it in our running backs episode. Yes. Dude, this guy is so forking fun to watch. I said I, it before. Antonio Gibson vibes from my end, and I don't say that lightly. Loved him coming out of college, uh, out of Memphis. He's a bit raw as a running back, but dude, like this guy's got athleticism for days. He's got all of like the the flashy explosiveness that you can ever dream of. Uh, b- fourth best yards after contact per attempt in all of college amongst running backs with 100 plus attempts with 4.4 yards 4.44 yards excuse me fifth highest elusive grade among running backs this past year with 100 plus attempts with a 163.5 his total numbers aren't there because he wasn't really utilized as much as some of like the really more prolific prolific running backs that you hear about he only had 114 attempts but if you look at the averages of those 114 running attempts they're elite. The guy hits holes quickly. He's a pure athlete, violent feet, 448 speed, prototypical size, 5'11, 210. 
Tyrone Tracy is so fun to watch. And he's just a freaking playmaker, man. Like he forces missed tackles so often. Great out of the backfield. I would love if this guy somehow got on this Chargers team. I know they already got J.K. Dobbins. I know they got the they, they I think they can go for one more, honestly. So please, Chargers, please get this man on this Chargers team. I'm glad that you brought up Tyron Tracy, because honestly, I was going to put him in my list of guys, but then I thought to myself, because I knew how much you loved him, and I thought, you know what? Dan is probably going to end up putting him in his list. I'm just going to let him take the ball and run with it. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, I love him. Jake, let's go. We, I, I mean, I knew you were going to have Latu. There's no way we were not going to have Latu on this list. I'm saving Latu for the end. Okay, let's just <laughs> let's just make that note right now. So I'm going to go the opposite direction here. So I'm going to go from right to left. Let's start with Jonah Ellis. Uh, edge out of Utah. 37 tackles, 13 sacks, 24 quarterback hurries, and one forced fumble. Seek and destroy mentality is Jonah Ellis. Quick first step off the line, gets into the backfield so fast he is an absolute speed demon. Comes off the edge with inside moves, and he even has a speed move, Dan, that would probably make Dwight Freeney just sit back and give an ear-to-ear grin on his face. Uh, can power through shed blocks with ease, gets to the quarterback. He's just high-motor, high-intensity kind of player that is just really going to benefit a defensive line no matter where he lands. I love the tape that I see from Jonah Ellis. I think he's just one of those guys that – the character is going to match the intensity that he brings on the field. And overall, however you want to slot him, he's going to be a guy who's going to come in and just produce from day one. Yeah, I love Latu. He was my edge one from the jump. And then a lot of Not people Latu. were talking. Not Latu yet. <laughs> I, I'm, talking, I'm already going to Latu. I don't even care. Like, just move on. Go. In Go. due time, my friend. In due time. Be I know, patient. I know, I know. Look, I know. <sighs> Jonah Ellis, like the guy's, a, the guy's a stud. The guy's a stud, and this kind of reminds me of like um, on my slide. I have like the guy that I would want by far, and then if I can't get that guy, then I have the guy that I think would be like a great consolation prize. Which that might be disrespectful to Jonah Ellis, but like, make no mistake about it, the guys you know on left and right side of frame right now, like they're in different categories. And I'm sorry, I just got excited about Law 2 and I jumped the gun. All right, geez. Patience, my friend. (laughs) Patience. Uh, I'll move to the next player right next to him. That's Ray Davis out of Kentucky. Probably one of my favorite running backs in this entire class. Um, You, you, first of all, the story behind him in general throughout his entire college career is just so great to root for. He's definitely just that guy that you want to be here, his cheerleader in this circumstance. And had experiences through three different colleges between Temple, then Vanderbilt, then ended up suffering a torn ligament that ended up uh, ending his 2021 season. He doesn't possess some of the high-end traits that other running backs in this class do, but he has that skill set that could translate so smoothly to the next level. And he had success in both zone and gap schemes, runs between tackles very, very easily, can shake defenders with his cuts. Best game came against Florida where he had 280 yards rushing in that game and just showed what he's all about. Power, outside running, cut ability, utilization in the passing game. Again, 1,000-yard seasons in three different programs for him. I would love to see where Ray Davis ends up, and especially now after the J.K. Dobbins signing for the Chargers. I still think that, obviously, the running back is going to be addressed, but I think the timing in which they ultimately end up addressing it for them, I don't think it comes before day three. I was going to ask, so when do you, so between Tracy and Davis, like when do you see these guys going, and do you think they go before the Chargers would realistically pick a running back? Tyron Tracy, to me, Seems like he could be a guy that could sneak in to round three just before day three. I think that there is something about him that Uh just people love, that people are enamored with. And again, it depends on when this run of running backs is going to end up happening. That's the big question. The third round might be the, the spot where you start seeing them come off the board in bunches. But the good news is for the Chargers is because they're not necessarily looking for RB1 in this class. They're going to go in my opinion, much more by a running back by committee style. Pick your flavor on who you want in this running back class because the skill sets are 
a, a plenty in this one. And any one of them could add some great versatility to this backfield. Yeah, real quick. Let's go to a couple comments real fast. James Wagner says, with the running backs we have, couldn't we go UDFA for adding more running backs? Absolutely. They 100% can. And I think there's somebody in the chat earlier. Uh, folks have not gone and seen it. Uh, Haley Elwood and Joe Hortiz sat down. And Joe Hortiz, music to my ears, are already talking about they don't stop at the draft. They are already working on kind of their big board, their target list for UDFAs. Free agency has not ended. So 100%, they could be looking at running backs for UDFAs. No question about it. Uh, Eddie, Sal- Eddie Saldana says, that's why I can't wait till Monday. All the questions will be answered. We'll know what the 2024 Los Angeles Chargers will look like. No more mocks and dream Thursday, Friday, Saturday will be reality. Eddie then says, Jake, they should have drafted a tight end. <laughs> God dang it. Yes, I know. I feel like that's been 12 straight months that the, that we've been saying that under the table. Yep. Yep. Soccer Loop says, draft on my mind 24-7. Brad says, I love this shit. LF, go! Uh, bummer for Eddie, though. Sucks he'll be working on draft days. Oh, That's the worst. Oh, honestly. that's horrible. That's the worst. Uh, I don't know. We I don't know. We have Hayden Hurst, Disley, and Parhan. Do we really need a tight end? Jake, do we need a tight end? I think that they will address the tight end at some point in this draft. To what capacity? Because obviously Brock Bowers is the guy in this draft and however you want to look at it in terms of now what the chargers need, because you've brought in Hayden Hurst, you brought in Will Disley. You only have Parham and stone smart under contract for this next coming, um, coming season. So you're going to a need to address tight end at some point. So does that mean you go with an Eric all take a flyer on him who has some familiarity with Jim Harbaugh from way back in the day? Obviously, unfortunate injury history with him, but in terms of his athletic capabilities and what he could do when he is healthy and has the ball, that's one I wouldn't mind looking at either. Um, Outside of that, you know, you have your Ben Sinat, who a lot of people believe is going to be the second tight end off the board, your Jatavian Sanders in there as well. But I don't think that you prioritize tight end before day three whatsoever. Probably not even until... I don't know, maybe your second, fourth round pick that you have, depending on how many you have by the time that day three rolls along, who knows? But in general, will they prioritize tight end? Sure, but they won't do it high in this draft. I agree. I agree. Let's keep this train rolling. Brad says, am I crazy for being more worried about defensive tackle and DBs than I am about the wide receiver situation? No, you're not crazy. Uh, Let's talk about the DB that you have second to left. Oh my gosh. Talk about a guy (laughs) who has been such a joy to watch and through this whole draft prospect or prospect, this whole draft process has broken my heart because it is so good to see the rise of Quinion Mitchell in this. Sucks, is it not? And if you remember like two months ago, yes, that's what I was just about to say. (laughs) What the cornerback class looked like. Two, two and a half months ago, it was Kool-Aid McKistry and it was Nate Wiggins as, at that point in time, the consensus one and two corners. Now we have dramatically shifted so much to where Quinion Mitchell was once looked at as a second round prospect. Is now in the mix to possibly be the first cornerback off the board in the draft, which is just wild. But you talk about a guy who has just done everything right for the past several months, uh, whether we're talking about Senior Bowl, the Combine, just demolishing everything. Speed, agility, Mitchell's got that. Coverage ability, 37 career passes defended, great in man coverage, mirrors wide receivers very well, diagnosis plays quick, diagnosis plays quickly when he's in zone coverage. Jumps routes, he's scheme versatile, was used all over the field predominantly on, on the outside or in the slot. He's physical, played predominantly an off-coverage scheme in Toledo, so there hasn't been much of an opportunity for him to show how physical he can be with wide receivers. And his instincts, Dan, I think that he has terrific instincts. His ability to read and react is some of the best of any cornerback in this entire class. He has fantastic closing speed. When the ball is in the air, he's able to change direction and make a play. Like I said, I love everything that I have watched from Quinion Mitchell. And if the situation comes about to where the Chargers ultimately end up trading down to, let's just say, for 11, How I would flip my board, because I already know that most likely I have missed out on the top three wide receivers, 
Mm -hmm. Cornerback is the next group that I would say, hey, top priority in terms of some playmakers that you need to add. So I know everybody would probably say they would go, you know, Fuaga or, you know, whichever offensive tackle they would want to choose at that point. And that would totally be fine. But I might want to go CB1. And truthfully, right now, I've got Quinion as my CB2 just behind Terry on Arnold. But I love everything that I see about Quinion Mitchell. Yeah, okay. I've waited far too long for you to talk about Latu. Can you talk about it now? <laughs> just been sitting here like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Fine. All right. <laughs> I have. To, I feel like I've talked about my love for Latu at nauseum on this podcast. He is my Rightly edge so. one in this class. Uh, that's above Dallas Turner, and that's above Jared Verse. He is just the Lex Luger of this class. He is the total package, in my opinion. 27 sacks over the past two seasons, 36 quarterback hurries, 15 sacks with a 40.5 pass rush win rate and a 23.9 pressure that is rate. stupid. Stupid good. <laughs> in summary, he was owning property in the backfield of opposing offenses. That was his side job. He was kicking in the back door and raiding the fridge on a week, week bin by week basis. His quickness off the snap is just absolutely ridiculous. He has a full complement of pass rush moves at his disposal. His bend ability to get around offensive tackles is so impressive. As good as his ability is to even get after the passer, Dan, he has solid instincts when he can drop into coverage. And if this was a multiverse where either Joey Bosa or Khalil Mack did not end up returning to the Chargers, the thought of pairing Latu with Thule and having this be the edge duo of the future is absolutely salivating. Man, hell, even if those guys stayed, like long-term approach, like a technician like Latu paired with the kind of the bulldoze bully of of Thule would just be sick and would be so nice to have. Imagine like a USC, USCLA, like all keeping the family of LA football, like LAFB be chilling. <laughs> Speaking of LAFB, Ryan Dyer says Latu for life. Shout out to Ryan Diary, by the way. If you haven't already done so, we did a dueling mock draft, Chargers versus Rams yesterday. I uh, feel pretty good about it, other than the folks flaming me for not going A.D. Mitchell for wide receiver. But I digress. Um, all right, Jake, let's get to the last ones. Because I know folks are wanting to do this mock draft, and we are as well. Um, let's switch gears here for a second. Apologies. All right, so you know I couldn't go. A special episode that's live about talking about our guys without talking about the guy second to left hell even to the left so i'll start the right go left uh trevandre sweat he has fallen off a cliff with that weight probably falls really really quickly because of the stuff that happened off the field and i understand that is a variable to take into account but if there's someone that can make this guy right and can take advantage of the situation at hand it's Joe Ortiz and Jim Harbaugh. And then you pair that with the fact of having someone that massive in the middle that we have not seen since Jamal Williams, realistically, on this Chargers team. Whether Ben Herbert gets in there, D-line coach gets in there to help with technique. Ben Herbert helps maybe get him into shape a bit to help him be able to last three downs, whatever it is. Imagine the possibility of him in the middle of the edge groups that we talked about. Paired with a Morgan Fox and a Puna Ford, a Scott Matlock. Like, that would be epic. And now because of the stuff, you're seeing him go from a second, third round pick to now being a day three guy, which is insane to me. There's no way that he's a day three talent. And I hope, I would think that this Chargers staff can kind of get him to kind of play right, if you will, and focus on the straight and narrow. And I know some people might be out on Trevondre Sweat because of that. Like, I get it. But I think him being surrounded by this staff, I think would be incredibly helpful. Dan actually comes in here and says, vets like Mac could help as well. Uh, Kevin says, I wouldn't want sweat. He'd easily beat. He's easily beat by athletic defenders. And that's why the NFL is today. You can't just put a big guy like sweat in the middle and expect success. He's going to struggle. I beg to differ. I beg to differ, but we'll see. Uh, next one, Roop Ororo. The guy is an athletic freak. And you talk about this Chargers staff, Jesse Minter, what you've seen in Michigan with Jim Harbaugh and company. The defensive line 
they just had athletes. Like that's what that defensive lot defensive front is predicated on is just athletic freaks. This guy is one of them. If I have a chance to bring him in again, this is probably at this point, he's probably going earlier than Javondre sweat, which I wouldn't have said before, but I'd take him again. We want athleticism on the defense. We talked about that. The linebackers with versatility, same thing with defensive line, get versatility. So Jesse Mitchell can shine, let him go crazy and put up some of these exotic fronts. I'm down for that. I'm not going an episode without talking about Taj Washington. I'm going Malik Neighbors last because you know. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, Taj Washington is the closest thing to my beloved Tank Dell since Tank Dell. Now, he's not round one worthy Tank Dell, like I said last year. But he is round three, excuse me, probably, in my opinion, round four, day three version of Tank Dell. A little small, I get it. But he will put everybody in a blender. Folks will say, oh, well, he'll get bullied by corners. Put him in motion. Don't care. He makes everyone look silly. His separation is insane. Think Roman Wilson, but more uh, on skates, in my opinion. Go watch his film. He is, in my opinion, so dynamic. He's not necessarily like the crazy fastest guy, which he does have speed. But he has kind of the agility and kind of the start-stop. He has kind of the, the Nintendo Switch, if you will, to make guys miss all over the place. And he would be a mismatch for defenders. I know he's small. Bulk him up, put him in motion, let him go crazy. He could be what I think we thought Darius Davis could be. Last on my list. And this might be a little bit easy because I think everyone at this point has climbed on board the neighbor's train. And we may see the Chargers draft this guy at five overall. And you guys might select him at five overall when we do our mock draft here in a bit. Malik neighbors is my favorite player in this draft class and has arguably been the, my favorite receiver that I have seen probably since Jamar chase. And that's including tank Dell, which I fork and love tank Dell too. I don't remember the chargers ever having somebody that has this type of athleticism and explosiveness paired with speed. And you can argue which receiver is quote unquote better between the big three. My favorite, the one who I think causes defenses to panic the most, to not give up the big play, to make them in conflict throughout is Malik neighbors. We don't know what this chargers team, what the fit is that they want to have. They don't, we don't know that we think we know. We think that maybe Odunze and maybe uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. fit what they want the most. Maybe, just maybe, Joe Hortiz and Jim Harbaugh say, you know what? Fork the fit. I want this thing to break. I want to put defenses in conflict, and I want to do something that we haven't done before. I don't want the, I don't want the X guy. I want the one who is going to freak folks out all the time. Give me a heavy box, throw over the top to neighbors. Give me a light box, run down your throat all day. What are you going to do? If you're a defender, what are you going to do? Honestly, he is my favorite by far. Dan Dude certified, trademark, you name it. Like, in my opinion, Jake, I'm going to be there with you. If the Chargers stay at five, or maybe they trade back to like six or something, and that's the guy that they choose, I am going to be relentless. <laughs> it, it I have would, wanted this guy since December. It wouldn't surprise me if if he got picked and how much you would lose your mind that I may actually like have to keep you from going out in public because of some like maybe <laughs> worry about disorderly conduct and you you know you getting put in the uh, drunk tank there for, for overnight. <laughs> you could actually be that excited. I'm, I might not be able to drive home, put it that way. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's a couple of scenarios where I may not be able to drive home for good or for bad reason. But uh, yeah, there was a bunch of questions before, Jake. Your money, if you are, if you like, if you are Hortiz and if you are Harbaugh and you're the offensive staff, knowing what we know currently, who do you think that they would want? Do they care about fit? We talked to Chris Rim today and they said it's less about fit, it's more about mentality and who's that dog. And they we talk about like they like dog. a little bit of crazy. What is the fit? that they're actually looking for? And is it him? 
this would have been much easier to predict if Keenan Allen was still on this roster. To me, this would have this would have made Malik Neighbors maybe even the proclivity pr- favorite to be the selection because of the skill dynamic that Keenan had and how much that mirrors to Marvin Harrison Jr. and how much that mirrors to Roma Dunze. Now it's just like, hey, take your pick. What do you need as it relates to wide receivers? And the best thing about this draft is there's so many. Whether you're talking about the top three, you go down a little bit further. Brian Thomas or A.D. Mitchell would be great fits. You go down even further, Xavier Leggett or Roman Wilson. As Dan said, you go down even further, Taj Washington, (laughs) Tez Walker. I mean, just keep going down the list and you can make an argument to say how they can fit well into this Chargers offense. So it's a great problem for them to have. And like you said, it was interesting hearing Chris talk about that today, that it's not so much about fit, but it's hard for me not to believe that it is. <laughs> it, it, it really is like, I, I hear you. I want to believe it, but at the same time, I can't bring myself to do that. <laughs> no, I like, I, I think, I think that if it was the Chargers and somehow Marvin Harrison was on the board, I think they're probably go. They would probably go Marvin Harrison Jr. Like I, I think. I mean, I could be wrong, but I think I, that I believe that if he was available to them at five, I don't think that they would waste any time in what they needed to do. Yeah, honestly. or trade back. Honestly, I think this just like cool. We're good. Which, yeah. Uh, so, Jake, switching gears here. And we went a little long there, but I got a little excited talking about your lot too and neighbors and all those guys. Uh, folks in the chat seem to like neighbors. There is some folks here talking about Adunze, which let me tell you, folks are sleeping on Adunze, man. I have seen so many people talk about like, ah, Adunze's not it for me. He's gonna be another Quentin Johnston. Like he's whatever, like uh, packed, like, come on. Like <laughs> he is going to be a stud. And if you watch how he plays, you watch who he mirrors his game after. Roma Dunze is like, if he was who the Chargers selected, I'd be pumped. Like, the guy's legit. I don't understand why all of a sudden everyone's like, oh, and maybe it's just because they like the two more. Yeah, I, I don't have to this. shit on people to, to rise people up. Like, come on. I, I said this a month ago when we did another live show and this question in terms of were people sleeping on a Dunze because all the chatter was about Marvin Harrison Jr. and Malik Neighbors. I will just put it to you as simply as I did a month ago. Rattle off the wide receiver room for the Chargers as it currently stands right now. And tell me that Roma Dunze cannot be that guy in that locker room on day one. And I'll just put it as simply as that. I mean, again, like you wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> like it's just, I think I've seen so many people just constantly poo-poo Roma Dunze that I'm just like kind of over it, honestly. Um, okay, Jake, switching gears here. Moment a lot of people have been waiting for. We're going to go all things mock draft now. So how we're going to do this, because we could be here for hours and I know folks got stuff to do. Doing a mock draft. I went on Twitter earlier and I asked if the Chargers were at five and Rome, excuse me, and Malik, wow, Marvin Harrison Jr. and three quarterbacks were selected, what would you prefer? And let me just go double check, make sure nothing crazy has happened. According to, and this was as of, as of right now with over 400 votes, stick and pick or trade down stick and pick wins with 61% of the votes. So we are sticking and picking. So folks in the chat, let's do quick one, two, three, one is going to be Malik neighbors. If we're sticking and picking in this scenario, one is Malik neighbors. Two is Joe alt. Three is a Four is Bowers neighbors. One alt two a Three. Bowers four. What say you? I'm going to get this five seconds. We're going to see one just flood the screen and we can move on. (laughs) Uh, We've got some for four. I don't know how to do a poll in this, to be honest. So apologies. I'm seeing the majority of one. Yeah, it's all ones. Okay, that was easy. All right. So we're going Malik Neighbors next. Okay, folks in the chat. 
Malik Neighbors is your now Los Angeles Charger. I know, folks, some people were saying three, some were saying four. The large majority were one, so one wins. Jake, where do you think folks are going? Folks in the chat, let us know. Round two. Are we sticking to pick and we trading? What do you guys want? 37, this is another area where Chargers could potentially execute a trade down if they don't end up getting what they want at five. Mm -hmm. And depending on how you do this, which would be interesting, but obviously the fact that Jerzon Newton is sitting there on the board at 37, first of all, is ridiculous, in my opinion. Yep. There's no People way that that's... said it, though. People yes, but there it. is no way that he should last to 37. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm going through, and let's just, I'm going to count these. I know people are asking, how is Newton there? Newton 37 is a steal, but some people are saying corner. But look how many people are saying trade down, like trade down, trade down, trade down, trade down. All right, so let's do it like this. Let's do it like this, because I see a lot of people for Newton. Dan mentioned the corners. Dan mentioned the trade downs. One, to select Newton. Two, to, let's look through the best corner on on this spot, or three is trade down. One is Newton, two is best corner, three is trade down. Let's see. We've got ones. Oh, here we go. Okay. Three. One, three. Oh, one. boy. One, three, 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 one, three. Oh, this is a lot more mixed this time. I've got a two in there. So it's Newton. Or, so it's basically between Newton and trading. There's a lot more threes coming up, though. Yep. Trade down. All right. Trade All down right. it is. So we're going from pick 37. I'm trying to accumulate some picks here, Jake. How far down should we go? 72 seems far. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you're going to go that far. All right. So we're doing 70. We're doing 37 for 43. Let's see. That's not working. 79. Nope. 109. There we go. We can do 43 for 109 and 143. Most likely that'll work. You think we can do it? Go ahead. All right. Let's offer the trade. If it doesn't work, I'm forcing it. Hey, trade accepted. Perfect. Fast forward. Here we are. Chargers pick 43 now. Troy Franklin. Again, don't need a receiver at this point. So you got Peyton Wilson on the board, Tyler Newbin, Zach Frazier, your boy, Jake. I know this is where folks are pumped about getting him, possibly. Jake, where do you think folks are wanting to go here? Who are the remaining corners on the board currently just Curious to possibly give other people an option. TJ Tampa, oh, Drew oh, Phillips, oh. Kyrie Jackson, Renardo, Renardo Green. Green. <laughs> okay, Jake, you got about 47 people in here saying Frazier. Frazier, like, Frazier, Frazier. Frazier, 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 Frazier. I, I won't even Frazier. ask the question when you have that <laughs> much overwhelming majority of people asking for it. All right. Frazier it is. Frazier, Frazier it is. is your no Los Angeles Charger picked at pick 43. You're now at pick 69. You have a center of the future, a great one, by the way. You also have bona fide playmaker in Malik Neighbors. Sam, what are you doing now? Are we going interior defensive line? Do we want to go edge? Somehow Junior Colson is still on the board. If you want to go linebacker, which would be sick, by the way. I'm not trying to sway the witness here or anything. But uh, folks in the chat, let us know where to kind of start this conversation. Let's see. Kevin saying, Colton. Gun offense, your first two picks that you have selected. Colton would be hard to pass up. So it looks like it's people in the chat are saying. Yeah, show, show, them, between, show them the corners. The corner. I'm curious yeah, to see who's now on the board. Oh, if Kyrie, Ricardo, right now. Jerry and, oh, and there's my Jones. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. I'm telling you. Jerry and Jones is going to make someone look so good. Obviously, in this circumstance, harder. because the picks now have now been Malik Neighbors, Zach Frazier, I would assume that the next pick is definitely going to be on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. Just, just it, my thought. So what are your options here, Dan? You could either go linebacker, you can go corner. Do we have any other options that we could possibly go? Some are saying running back, which I don't think that's the popular one, but you got Trey Benson there, Marshawn Lloyd, that's all there. Uh, so let's go real quick. Would you rather go corner? Or would you rather go Junior Colson? That seems like the two that were the most. Colson. People are asking for some people are asking for Rook. Corner is our biggest need at the moment. Someone says take Jackson. 
he, he's a he's a he's really good corner in my opinion. Yeah. I love watching Kyrie Jackson. Okay, I think Colson's the name we've seen the most. And it's probably Colson, I, mean, I see but, Colson. I also see. I mean, the, it's, it's, it's kind of even it's, corners. Yeah, yeah. It looks pretty even right now. All right, Jake. Do you think right now we, you and I both talked about this? This team needs to get corners badly. Yes. And this would be a tough decision for this team, having to decide between going with their homegrown talent and Junior Colson, or the priority, in my opinion, for this defense, which is corner. Now I'm seeing it be overwhelmingly be <laughs> Colson in here. But I mean, I've said it. I I can't see a scenario where the Chargers come out of two days of the draft and not select a cornerback. I just can't see that situation playing out, but it's not my mock draft. This is your guys's. Okay. What do we do? Do you think it's Colson? I think everyone, a majority, I, mean, look how many, look I think majority of people are picking Colson. Colson, Colson, linebacker, linebacker, Colson. Okay. We're going Colson. The people have spoken junior Colson, which dude, if they went junior Colson, Malik Neighbors and Zach Frazier as your first three picks. Like, that's cooking with gas. Next up, you are at pick 105, the beginning of round four. Again, you now have picks 105, 109, and 110. This is where Chargers fans make their hay. So, corner is probably where we're going to be looking. And honestly, this is probably, if it was me, is where I'm double dipping. Whew, there's your boy, Dan. Still on the board. Yep. <laughs> Jerry and Jones, Chris Avery Strain. Of, everyone's saying corner. Everyone's saying, well, I shouldn't say everybody. <laughs> People are asking to check the tight ends as well. Let's check the tight ends. Let's see. Cade Stover, Jared Wiley. Wiley, Theo Johnson. This is probably the realm you can get a tight end as well. Not going to lie. Uh, just looking at the running backs real fast. Blake Watson, Blake Watson, a lot of people well, have gotten big I, on Isaiah him. Davis, who I absolutely love watching Audric him. Estime is like one of my favorites. But see, this is the beauty part about this situation for the Chargers as it relates to the running backs. Again, not to lead anybody in terms of their pick goes, but the fact that you now have Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins, and yes, I understand the whole injury aspect with J.K. Dobbins. I mean, you're going to walk into this year right now as it currently stands, possibly with five running backs if you select one here in the draft. There's a look at how much skill set that you could possibly yeah. find here. Yeah, Tracy. I know everybody won. has their favorites. Tracy just went five picks at six picks ahead to the Rams. I would have been like I would have sprinted that one in. So did Braylon Trice left too. It has to, I think it has to be corner. I think it has to be corner, doesn't it? Yep. All right. That's that's me personally. Yeah, no no I, mean, I think that's what people are saying too. So at this point you've got Chris Abrams, Drain, Jerry and Jones, or... I saw some people asking for Carson. I saw some people saying Jones. Anybody else with any other saying, corners that A lot of people are saying Jones right like now. Like to throw in. There's a lot There's, of people saying Jones specifically. Jones, gotta be Jones. Jones, Jones, Jones. <laughs> Jones. Jay Baby says, we already got a quarterback. We already got a quarterback. I don't think we do. Who's our cornerback? He's he's talking about. Uh, I think he's talking about um, mentioning Christian Fulton. But still, tw- I get it. Twenty five years old, one year deal. All Hopefully, right, we you got- get a reclamation project out of that. You still need some corner depth in this backfield. Yep. Here is Jerry and Jones, your newest Los Angeles Charger, because everybody is wanting him, except for a few people. Somebody Apologies. was asking, "Is Kyrie gone?" I believe he just went a few he picks before the selection. Yep, he was gone. Okay, now you're picking at 109. The tight ends are still there. For those who wanted tight ends, what are folks thinking? What position? Tight ends, have? running backs. Again, because what, Dan? This was only how many picks later from where we just selected? Four picks later. Four picks later. You still got your choice of a lot of these guys. I think you could probably, I mean, you have the next two picks back to back. So. You can also, people are saying double dick at what? Double dip. <laughs> Woo! Double yeah. dip. It's draft time, baby, <laughs> when you start dropping words like that on a live show. Double dip at wide receiver. Hey, you can go Brendan Rice, Taj Washington are here, Jacob Cowling. I know people are high on him too. They can double dip. Wide receiver, that could be fun. 
What's the interior of the defensive line look like? Yeah, people are looking at interior and edge. Let's go there real quick. Interior defensive line. Ho. Ho, ho. Hey, both of our guys are here. Hey. Yo. If it was between these two, Jake, if it was right now, which of these guys are you taking? Between those three? No, between Sweat and Carter. I would probably lean Carter just because, again, of the versatility I and the consistency with him. With Sweat, I personally, look, I'm not knocking Sweat. And I think that he was trying to make a statement when he showed up at the same weight at the Combine from when he showed up at the Senior Bowl. That's what he's come through at playing at that type of a weight. And again, he's a freaking behemoth and a, a, a scary athletic one for a guy that's that big, surprisingly. But I think he's trying to prove a point that he can last out there longer than what people are predicting. But in this particular scenario, I would lean towards Carter just because, A, yes, you don't have those weight issues. And B, the versatility and the consistency in terms of his motor is there with Carter. You got people spamming the shit out of sweat right now. Look at that. It's like I I, I, sweat, I, to, I sweat, totally sweat, understand. Sweat, I totally sweat. understand why. I totally <laughs> understand why. The so I, I I would not knock this pick at all. I think that this would honestly be a great pick, and personally, was probably where a lot of people before the draft process really got going had originally predicted him to go. And then, of course, before the DWI situation, he was probably a lot higher. So if you can get to Vondre Sweat at this point in time, regardless of what you think about his weight issues, I think that's great value. All right, so we're going Sweat. Good news is you have the next pick. So Chargers fans, where are we going now? You can go tight end, safety, running back, linebacker. Let's go through these real quick. Tight end, you got Jared Wiley, Theo Johnson, Jaheim Bell. Tip Raymond's another one that people probably like. Probably not linebacker because you took Junior Colson, so that's now off the board. That's right. All right, let's look at Edge real quick. I'm seeing I'm seeing Rice, I'm seeing Watson, I'm seeing again a lot of people saying Sweat. <laughs> Still, offensive line saying Limmer, Bo Limmer is he in here? Looks like Bo. Oh, he is in there. Okay, you already got, but you got you already got Zach Frazier. You're gonna go two interior two interior linemen like a Bo Limmer. I guess came out he can, in the he press conference. Play. Yes, he could play that, but I think his I think he was saying his preference was that he was ultimately going to end up going to guard rather than playing center. That was where his preference was to be. Yes, can he play it? Obviously, he can. But I think that that was where a lot of people were thinking to say, hey, screw it, kick him inside, and he could be a guard. Yeah, uh, Jake, a lot of people are saying Rice. A lot of people are saying Rice here. So let's go quickly here. So receivers, you've got Brendan Rice. Let's have Rice be a choice. That'll be one. Let's put Tavondre Sweat as a choice in there. Be it two. No, we already got, got Sweat. So okay. Pick before. So Rice oh, is sorry. one. Uh, people are saying tight end as well. So we'll do Rice, tight end, or running back. Those are probably the three, would you say? Okay. That's fine. Rice, tight end, or running back. You got 10 seconds, folks. Here we go. James Wagner says O line depth. Uh, Rice, defensive tackle is one of their biggest needs. They already got sweat, so we're good with there. Rice, Rice, need athletic tight end. Rice. It's looking majority like Rice. There's a right lot now. of Rice. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of which, I'm a lot of Rice. <laughs> Brendan Rice is your newest Los Angeles Charger. Moving on up. Where are we going here, guys? Fam. Looks like a lot of people are thinking running back too. So let's look it's at running back. Tight now. end, your running back. You still have some great options here for the running back spot. Kamani Vidal would be a fun selection. Will that Shipley would be, would be a good fun. change of base. This is a this would be a good value for Will Shipley right now, in my opinion. How far has he fallen, by the way? Who I'm like, sorry, who are you talking about? Will Shipley. Like, remember when he was looked at like a couple months ago was like within definitely RB five to ten and now he's like i mean ranked 145 i i mean i had him what as my ninth favorite running back prospect in the yeah. draft yeah so still this probably sounds about right okay so people are saying shipley 
So what other positions should we steer towards? You already have interior defensive line. Got You've already got loving the Shipley, and then people who can't stand Shipley. <laughs> yeah. Give it, so we, yeah, right. we got uh, so we got the tight ends, the running back possibility. Here's your offensive tackles. Is there another option for edge, possibly, Dan? I know we've been going some heavy defense here, and we need to put some focus on the offensive side of the ball. But what does the edge class say? Right? Oh, there's there's one of your guys that you actually picked in the dueling mock draft yesterday. Love Gabe Murphy. Yep. Okay, so in the chat, let's go real quick. Would you rather go edge, tight end, or running back? Running back. One, two, three. Edge, tight end, running back. Let's go. Let's go, guys. Come on. Come on. DB is also an option, too. But we have pick 140 and 143, so we can do those pretty quickly right after the other. Cam Hart's still on the board. Dude. Yes. 140 and, one, 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 four, 140 and 143 are the picks that you guys have. So it's going to be very close with one another. Yep. Cam Hart is on the board. A lot of people are changing this up and saying corner. Corner. So we got corner people asking specifically about cam hart tight end or cornerback corner corner db is cam hart on the board remember you will be selecting what three picks from this very selection right now totally clips of the heart oh <laughs> too good i see heart okay. i see heart. yeah heart heart or dj Boy, james heart. go go mr cam hart out of notre dame all right now, I feel like if Will Shipley, and Will Shipley is still there. Three is now picks later. Be, is now going to be when we do Shipley? Mm. Now is your running back spot. People who were wanting tight end, possibly. You got your bruiser already. You got J.K. Dobbins. Is this still Edward, round five, Dan? Yeah. We got four Still picks round left. five. Four picks left. This is round five for everybody who's keeping track. So round five, pick eight. Tackles, you can go Christian Jones. We know this team prioritizes offensive line. Interior offensive line. I know a lot of people love Zach Zinter. What are folks thinking? Isaac Grendo was a request here. He is still there. You can definitely get him later if you want him. Jake, what should our options be? You a lot two, of people are saying you go running back, you go tight end here. Oh, tight end. Yep. Again, still even a possibility for your edge class. Try to make this even kind of a BPA scenario based off of some remaining holes to fill. If you're going, I mean, if we're going BPA, I feel like it's, I would think it's probably, probably Shipley. One or two letters on the board there. Okay. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? I, hear you. I said letter Taylor's on the board there. Didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep I'm getting sweat in him, by the way. Cool. Uh, okay, so Edge DB, which they could go safety. Malik Mustafa, by the way. Love that kid. Um, I think Shipley. It looks like Peel. I don't know. We already got two receivers, James Wagner. He asked what the receiver class is. We have Malik Neighbors and Brendan Rice. Did you end up going two corners as well? You went Jones and Hart, correct? Jones and Hart. So you got okay, your so we got corner two corners. You got two corner. wide receivers. Yep. Some people are saying BPA is Zinter to go right now. So let's let's try to narrow this down as best as possible. Running back, it looks like the consensus would be if running back was there, it would be Will Shipley. If anybody else wants to cast a vote for that to try to sway that, by all means, put the name in the all chat. Right. Will Shipley or Zach Zinter? Shipley or Zinter? Shipley or Zinter? And help. For, for, tight end. Shipley, Zinter, tight end. Six, five, four, three, two. Shipley, Shipley, Ship. Letter T. <laughs> <Zinter. laughs> no, right. that is just like Zinter, Zinter, tackle, letter Taylor. <laughs> God dang it. You guys aren't helping me. We got to get going. We got to eat soon, fellas. Ladies, come on. Sh okay, Sh I think Shipley wins. Okay. Ah. Shipley, Shipley. Zinter, Zinter, Zinter. Shipley, Shipley, Shipley. I mean, Zinter might actually win. 
this was probably the most diverse pick of the entire mock draft so far in terms of who was left on the board. Okay, Zinter Shipley, Jake, I'm letting you decide. It seems like a toss-up here, so you pick. When's the next selection for the Chargers? In 40 picks, roughly. Uh, okay, so whichever one I pick, the other one is most likely not going to be on the board. Um, you know what? We have to figure that Jim Harbaugh is going to address the offensive line at some point and outside of the center position. So you want to build up a little bit more depth. So in this case, I'm going to make an executive decision and call it on Zinter. Okay. Running backs left. We've got Kamani Vidal, Cody Schrader, Isaac Garendo. Kamal Haddon is there, honestly. So you go three DBs? <laughs> yeah, dude. How many DBs we right now? We never starting? stop taking, <laughs> looking for corners. Never stop. Taking quarters. Yeah, again, they already got Junior Colton for folks saying linebacker. But if you want to go double dip at linebacker, you can do that too. Michael this Barrett's is, there. This is probably also, again, I feel like we've been saying this the last three picks now for either your running back spot or your tight end spot, depending on who's on the board. But it's great for a running back if you're still looking to make a selection here. This would be this would be a fun Garendo pick, in my opinion. It would be. Jones, people were talking about Christian Jones. He's not there anymore. Uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing a lot of Isaac. I believe Blake Watson for someone asking. Uh, he had he had went. I want to say maybe a round ago. Okay, I think it looks like people are saying I've got Vidal or Ali, Isaac. More people pick Garendo than anybody else. Garendo, Garendo Vidal. again. Isaac, Garendo. A lot of people like them, so Garendo. Let's do it. Garendo, lock it in. Two picks left. We're in rounds. We have two seventh round picks, guys. Do we this this could be when they go get like their quarterback and just waste it on the seventh round again. You still again, brought back seven. Easton Stick. You're fine. True. Seventh round. What are we doing, guys? This we can go quick here. Tight end, still an option here. Yep. Taylor McLaughlin. You can see that. Trey Knox. T- T- Tanner McLaughlin. <laughs> Lance asks, is Marvin Harrison Jr. still available? <laughs> <laughs> Someone Ryan. says trade down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, tight end, I'm guessing. I would so assume so. Tight end? Yeah. Uh, I'll take probably decide. You pick. Which one of these do you like the most? You probably just go BPA here. Uh, go McLaughlin? Yeah, you, and you probably go to McLaughlin in this scenario. Or do you like this kid? Someone says, I don't know. I've honestly never seen him, so I don't know if he's good or not. I would probably go McLaughlin here if it was me. All right. People are saying span forward, but that's the same person that said Minnesota. All right, we're going BPA because that's what Joe Ortiz does. And don't need final, a kicker. That's the good. Final pick. Mr. Irrelevant for the Chargers, at least. Someone wants to trade us. We're not doing it. What is the edge? Um, what's the edge room? Probably been picked to the bones by this point. I mean, good lord. Oh yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Is Bo Nix available? No, he's not available. <laughs> Last one. Should we get Tagovailoa just to make it fun? That'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew Coker. What the quarterback room look like? You've ad- let's kind of do a recap here. You've addressed your wide receivers twice, your cornerback twice, your center, your interior defensive line. You have linebacker. linebacker. You took a running back. You took a tight end. In your guys' opinion, I guess maybe you can show you. me the safety room, Dan, but what do you guys think that the Chargers remaining Mark needs Perry. are for the final pick? Oh, Mark Perry would be a good one. I can't believe he's still there. That's crazy. They have his usual rankings between like the sixth and seventh round. Honestly, I would probably do some kind of corner. Remember, we just took tight end as our last, our last pick that we just selected was a tight end. Someone says grab a Wolverine. So that could be Josh Wallace. This is our last pick guys. What are we done? (laughs) Okay, so everyone, a lot of people are saying offensive linemen. So let's go to offensive line, offensive tackle, offensive. These are the best ones. They got Andrew Coker, Layden Robinson, Trent Jones. Okay, Trent Jones is there. 
Do you want to go Michigan? I put the line at one and a half for Michigan Wolverines for them to be selected. So far, they have only selected one. This would be two. What does the BPA chart look like, Dan? Let's just look at it like that. It's a bunch of punters and quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. This is where this is where we're at. Okay. Honestly, I would say either go Mark Perry or offensive line. I know people are talking offensive line. That's probably a Jim Harbaugh thing too. If it were me looking at this, I would probably say round it out with Perry. That would be me. Okay, it's round seven. We're doing it. <clears throat> Mark Perry. Honestly, fam, we did it. We did it. Let's see how they graded it. I would be over the fork and moon if this is how the Chargers draft board ended up being after day three. So, I'm going to go slowly here. I'm going to take my time with this one. Malik looking, Neighbors. Looking pretty good throughout uh, round yeah. four so far. Malik Not Neighbors, bad. Zach Frazier, Junior Colton, Jerrion Jones, Travondre Sweat with a steal. Brendan Rice stays in L.A. Cam Hart, fan favorite. Zach Zinter, another fan favorite. Isaac uh, who's, got, who's got bad smoke on Zach Zinter all of a sudden here in round four? What, five? We, according to them, we reached there, but okay. everyone says that that's not a reach, at least on our side. Uh, Tanner McLaughlin, Mark Perry, A minus. Well done. Y'all, we did it. We did it. A minus. I'm going to put this one up in the on X so folks can see it. Hang it in the Louvre. Um, fam, we are so close. If you have not done so already, please. Do us a favor, hit the like and subscribe. I know this was a long show. We went kind of crazy, but we wanted to make sure that we got through and talked about some of your guys, some of our guys, as well as doing a mock draft that you guys and gals control. Because at the end of the day, y'all have been the ones that have helped us get to where we are, that kind of keep these live shows going, all of the comments and all of the feedback and all the likes and subscribes. If you haven't done so already, please do so again. We're almost to 7,000 already, which is crazy. Um, thank you to everybody. Jake, parting words. Two days left before the NFL draft, which is wild. Can't wait to be there with you through it all. Parting words, I would say, let's have some fun this weekend. Another thing that I have said and that I have learned through, as we've all learned from watching this team over these several years, in this particular draft with a new regime in control, and I know everybody has their player that they want or a situation that they want to pan out, try not to pigeonhole yourself into thinking of just one thing and hoping that it's going to happen. Because in this particular case, with this particular draft, it could go so many different ways. And honestly, through the last decade of what has taken place from the draft with the Chargers, just let it ride and have fun with it and have an open mind for what's going to take place because this is going to be a fun three days of the NFL draft coverage. And I cannot wait. Look at, at the end of the day, uh, eggnog surfboard says, just wait till the pros do the draft. Be excited. It might not look the way you want, but they know what's up. You guys, gals, chargers fans, all were almost like 96% clamoring for Jim Harbaugh to come in and turn this thing around. And he's here. I don't think it's really fair for anyone to really question it within the first three, four months of him being the Chargers head coach. Let Jim Harbaugh, let Joe Hortiz cook. Sweet Jump says, yes, Jake, saving lives out here, 100%. Um, I do it again. I'm just pumped to see what this team does because this is, like I said, at the top. New era of Chargers football. New era of drafting. We could see a trade down for a, like, whoa, what's happening? Embrace it all. Enjoy it all. Uh, this is a new era upon us, and I think Chargers fans should be very excited. Dan says, to trade or not to trade, that is the question. Uh, Nick says, it's going to be a great weekend. Jake, anything else before we get out of here? Let's go. 
James Wagner says, enjoy the good that is coming. All of you have been the good that has been with us from the beginning. We appreciate all of you. Again, if you have not done so already, please hit that like, subscribe. We do have the giveaway that we will be announcing on day one of draft. On day one of the draft, go to our X profile. All you got to do is like, subscribe, put the screenshot of your subscription. You have a chance to win a jersey of your choice of a Chargers draft selection of your choice. Like sweet jump says, win, win. For Jake, Dan, Chargers Unleashed, LA Football Network, this has been so much fun. Thank you all for everything you do to help this thing cook. We appreciate all of you. We'll talk to you next time on the next Chargers Unleashed.